So it's coming up on about a year since I first purchased the CM120 for the observatory. Um, I actually got it in April 2021, so you know, nearly a year. And I thought it was maybe time to go through and uh, do a bit of a review on the mount, talk about it, what I like about it, what I don't like about it. And to be honest with you, it's mostly what I like about it. There's not much I don't like about this mount. Um, it has a great capacity. Um, it can take 115 pounds. Traditionally, Ioptron has seemed to have named their mounts depending on the pounds that they can carry. Um, so this is a CM60, rated at 60 pounds. CM70, 70 pounds. You'd have thought this would be 120 pounds, but no, Ioptron says it's 115 pounds or 52 kilos. Um, <clears throat> that's plenty of uh, room or plenty of uh, capacity, should I say, for my setup. So uh, I wanted to get something this size that would do me for the future if I did end up getting a, a bigger and heavier telescope set up. The mount itself weighs 57 pounds or 26 kilos, which is a lot to be moving around. Um, it's best in observatory, I think, but you know, if you're strong enough, and I think Luke from Luca Medico has a Skywatcher EQ8, which is a similar weight, and he moves his in and out of the house um, effortlessly. Um, I think I'd be struggling a bit more to do that. Uh, the CM60 is enough to, to move around, but um, I guess you could uh, make it portable. Uh, probably if you're going to a star party and you're going to be there for a week, I don't think I'd take it out on a nightly basis. It would just be too heavy. It would probably cost too much in hernia operations in the end. So um, yeah, I really like the mount and let's just run through some of the features of the mount and as I said, the things I really like and the odd thing I don't like. Okay, so let's first talk about the clutch mechanism. Um, you have these two um, sort of switches or toggles if you like here. Uh, in the normal operating system they would both be pointing vertically. Uh, for the right ascension and for the declination they are both horizontal and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, this would be, this normal operation when you're actually slewing to a target and imaging etc. Um, this would be in the unlock position, there's a little lock which has a, shows it's unlocked. Over here this would be in the lock position. If you want to do balancing you would move it around to the unlock position and then away you go and you can balance your mount and uh, gosh it's so smooth the movement. Uh, when you're done, um, it makes a nice convincing lock into place. There's no guesswork as to where it needs to be and it's rock solid. That I prefer uh, to the CEM60, which I have here. And um, when you are in going to uh, sort of change the declination or move that around and balance that, you would move into the, to turn this to disengage and then it could move around. And then when you'd finished, you'd move it back to engage. But you couldn't go the whole way. Um, you needed to come back about a fifth of a turn, sort of guess roughly where it was, um, in order for this to be able to then slew without making a terrible grinding noise. If you did accidentally tighten it up fully, um, you'll pretty much hear all about it as soon as you start slewing to a target, and it won't actually slew. So, um, yeah, this was always a, not that bad, but it was always a little bit of guesswork, and occasionally you'd forget and just tighten it up, and hear that terrible grinding noise whereas on the uh, CM120 it's a, a kind of a yes no situation where it's unlocked or locked. If we come round to the declination here, let's get the camera in the right place and um, you can see here we've got the two switches that are horizontal. Again the small one you have in the lock, unlock position and the larger one is in the lock position and then the one you want to balance your declination you just flick it across to that and um, do your balancing and then when you're done it, it uh, goes back into a nice definite lock position and of course it's solid as a rock. Okay let's talk about the dovetail saddle uh, as you can see here. Um, this is a um, Losmandi style dovetail. Um, it is 17.2 inches or 437 millimeters. And uh, as you can see, it's quite shallow. This now, this is fine. This fits my um, CM120 quite nicely. But I know people have had telescopes where they have 
connection bolts that are quite long and protrude down a short distance. Um, you can't actually sort of slide this over on, onto, the, onto the dovetail plate uh, and people then have to sort of have other adapters just to um, raise everything up a bit. So there has been a bit of a complaint. For me it hasn't turned out to be an issue because uh, this one just slotted straight in as does the um, dovetail plate for my Mead uh, 10 inch SCT. So if I was going to have a gripe with uh, the mount um, and it's true of both the CEM60 and the CEM120, it's these uh, tightening uh, parts here. They are pretty hard to tighten and pretty nasty on your fingers and uh, in order to get it really tight, I mean I know it's probably designed to put your fingers like that, but I wouldn't trust that it's tightening it well enough. You don't want this whole thing sliding back and dropping off. Um, but these really are cut into your fingers something awful so I tend to find I've got to grab a cloth or something just to tighten them up. It'd be nice if they made these handles a little bit more hand friendly but uh, that's that's the way it is and this one's also a little bit difficult to sort of really get in here because you're um, you know it's very close to the the body of the mount here so um, it is hard to tighten this one up. Uh, the telescope is held in place by these I just screw them in a bit these sort of protruding pins that uh, dig into the um, plate and um, I must admit I was a little nervous when I first uh, mounted this because I was used to the CEM60 which had a sort of a clamp type system for uh, holding the telescope in place. Uh, there is a little bit of adjustment you can make where this one could be moved to this position but these I don't think can be moved at all that's fine um, but in this particular situation with this telescope I'm only cropping it by two not the third one which did make me nervous initially but uh, I've been using it for the best part of a year and it's never slid or moved or anything so it works fine. So I talked about the dovetail saddle um, on the CM120 and as you can see the CM60 has the ability to take two different sizes of plates and uh, also it uses a different system, it uses that sort of um, this sort of more broad pl plate which um, squashes into the, the uh, dovetail, the Osmandy plate on your telescope and that's what I'd been used to so and that's what I was getting, took a little bit of getting used to to um, deal with those two little pins that just come out and poke into the uh, Osmandy plate on the telescope. But as I said they both seem to work very well and very securely. This is obviously a lot deeper as well so again you'll see M60 if you're coming from a mount a telescope that has its um, dovetail plate with some bolts that protrude quite low down the bottom um, they might have slotted quite happily into uh, the CEM60 but the CEM120 being so much shallower um, could pose a bit of an issue so just something to be aware of if you're purchasing this mount that you might just need to get an extra uh, dovetail plate or two just to raise your telescope up and get those um, bolts out of the way. So something that really attracted me to this um, model apart from the fact that it takes quite a decent capacity and would be good for any future telescopes were I to get a bigger one um, is the cable system, the internal cable management and what that means is as you can see here there's nothing here running to ground from the dovetail saddle where various things are plugged in um, and the rest of the mount which isn't moving so you know you, unless you've got some cables really dangling off the rest of the telescope uh, you don't have to worry about snags and that was fantastic. Uh, gives a lot of peace of mind when you might want to have a bit of snooze while the uh, telescope is perhaps about to reach Meridian Flip, you just really don't have to worry about it can, uh, snagging uh, anywhere. Okay so we'll talk about the connections at the uh, back of the mount down here. You've got your 12 volt in, your on off switch, this is where the hand controller plugs into and this is where your RS232 plugs in that then sort of runs down to your PC. Uh, I have an Intel NUC um, just attached to the column of the pier so 
it just runs down to there. This is a USB 2. Um, there's a LAN port here and then you've also got Wi-Fi because you can directly connect to this um, mount. Uh, I actually you know, connect to it via um, ASCOM and through Nina anyway, um, through my Intel NUC, so don't really use that feature. And there's a GPS uh, module here which would be good particularly if you were extremely strong and be able to move around, move this mount around, grab some GPS coordinates, coordinates of where you actually were. So uh, further up the mount here, um, still parts that are stationary, uh, you have a USB 2 out, a USB 3 out, there's an auxiliary in which I think is actually quite good for um, adding extra power or some other uh, devices. There's an iPolar port for uh, the iPolar scope I presume. And then over here is your power input and the thing I really like about this and again it attracted me to this mount was the in was a 10 amp which means you can play tons of power up to the rest of the mount. Now I looked at the CEM70 and um, I might have to double check on this but although it had two inputs they were both 3 amp which um, kind of seemed a bit low to me um, particularly when I have a Pegasus power box advance on the top that can take 10 amps I'd only be able to run 3 amps um, to it so I really like the fact that it had this 10 amp connection in. So here are the connections on the dovetail saddle and what we have on this mount is two USB, two, a guide port which I'm again not using, the auxiliary out uh, which I'm also not using and the uh, eye port which I guess I think is for the poloscope again and then you have three USB 3s. Now I have seen videos from uh, other people who are in the 120 uh, that purchased theirs in 2019-2020 like, and they seem to show one USB 3 port and four USB 2. And I've since found out on the Optron site that those people can actually get, uh, can buy a replacement box, if you like, for, that will actually have these exact connections. And you just swap it out for the older mounts that were mostly USB 2. So that's, that's great that they've provided that. Now one thing I'd, I should mention is that some there are some videos out there and some people have mentioned that uh, this uh, declination um, or the dovetail saddle should I say is uh, a little bit wiggly and apparently what you can do is, and I'll try and do this one handed, if we just unlock this, move the telescope out to the side and you can see there's a little, little hole down here if it'll focus in there and you can see there's a bit of metal across now I shall try and um, keep this steady and uh, try and lock it into we'll just move it across to this point like this and if I just lock it across put it in the lock position um, it then opens up and uh, what you can then do is you can put an allen key down through there and just tighten tighten it up so that you don't get the little wiggle um, I know down the camera here it looks like the metal piece hasn't moved completely out of the way but um, trust me it has if I look straight down you can see that it, is a, it is, um, has moved out of the way my understanding is that this might be useful for making adjustments if you have big temperature swings between summer and winter we don't get those here uh, at the most we probably get to you know if I'm imaging at night it's probably at most 21 degrees and in summer and in winter down to about three degrees so not the vast temperature swings that some people might have um, I know Joe Navarro who's got this mount um, he gets snow and goes well into the minuses so um, it's probably um, something that he'll be making use of and I'm guessing that this is probably true for this little um, slot here although um, yeah, I'll have to look that up further as to whether you can make some adjustments if you find that the um, shaft uh, is wiggling around a little bit. Um, now to make your altitude adjustments you've got um, a couple of these, one on this side, one on the other side, which you just use the Allen keys to loosen them off to allow it to, to move in this track. And then you have a, a very nice um, large and easy to turn knob which you can use for adjusting your altitude. Uh, when it comes to the azimuth changes, 
uh, you have these adjustments over here and there's a little scale and if you can see there's a scale on there so you can see how much it's moving but these are actually easy to move because they're not like something tightening so although they're the same sort of finger shredding um, uh, nuts on their levers um, they are quite easy to turn so your adjustments on azimuth are, um, are quite easy and simple and it's, it's very very smooth so as I mentioned, I've got a Pegasus Powerbox Advance mounted on the top of the telescope, uh, which is um, connecting pretty much to everything. I've got the power coming out to my dew heaters. I've got um, power coming out to the camera. And uh, I also have power running out to the uh, focuser, the Pegasus um, Focus Cube. And over this side, I've got my USB connections all going into the uh, four ports on the Pegasus power box and then this one USB out comes out and it just runs round to the back and uh, plugs into one of these USB 3 ports and then the all the signal from the USB 3 goes through the internal um, cable management system and uh, basically comes out here and runs down to my Intel NUC which is just attached here by some uh, Velcro and a few uh, cable ties. So yeah that's the nice thing about this, there is absolutely nothing between the moving parts and uh, the, the ground uh, which means I do not have to worry about cables snagging which is fantastic. Uh, one other thing I should just mention, the USB 3 ports are powered apparently so that's also something to be aware of. So if we look at the dovetail saddle and look at the power that's coming out, uh, you can see there are two um, 5 volt DC outs. Uh, one of them takes the 2.5 millimeter um, plug, this one here, and the other one takes 2.1 millimeter. Um, so you can choose between those two, but that's great. That's f uh, at least five amps. That I've got running up to the um, Pegasus Powerbox Advance, even though it can take 10 amps. And then if we run round to the other side, there are two more 12 volt outputs here, and these are one amp each, and they're also the 2.1 millimeter connectors. So yeah, plenty of power to, um, connections to go to your equipment. Um, as I said, I'm actually running the whole rig, the camera. Uh, filter wheel, focuser, everything um, through the Pegasus Powerbox Advance. So uh, yeah, just one one connection required over here. Now the counterweight shaft is a really heavy piece of metal in its own right, and solid as, and um, it is obviously a lot thicker than the one on the CEM60. Um, and therefore you can't use the weights uh, from that one but these are the two weights that it comes with uh, and they are 10 kilos each. I initially had uh, my whole rig here um, balanced with just one of these weights um, sort of down, you can see down where there's a, a mark there. Um, I'm actually going to try it uh, further up the shaft to see if that helps a little bit with um, balance etc so uh, we'll see see how we get on with that. The mount comes with your standard um, hand controller by Ioptron which I'm very used to coming from the CEM60. Uh, might take a bit of getting used to if you're coming from a, a different type of mount like a Skywatcher etc. Uh, now one thing I, I guess people would like to know is what does it sound like uh, when it's slowing. In the dead of night it can sound, seem quite loud um, I don't think it is really, but um, we'll just uh, click this on to the maximum speed and we'll just slow it and you can hear what it sounds like. Now I actually got the Ioptron Pier, um, ordered it from the States and it came uh, over by post, rather a heavy thing, but it did mean that connecting 
this or mounting um, the CM120 was very easy. It was just these um, four bolt sort of things here, um, which uh, secured it uh, nice and strongly. But of course, the all-important thing to know about is how well does the, the uh, mount actually perform, and you know what kind of total RMS errors am I getting in PHD2 when I'm guiding? Because I run this. Uh, mount with a guide scope, so it's usually the 60mm Orion guide scope sitting on top of the Skywatcher Esprit 120 and I'm either, either using the ASI 290 uh, Mono Mini camera as the guide camera or the QHY462C. Now obviously your total RMS error will vary a bit and I noticed it can vary quite considerably depending on what the scene conditions are like and particularly here in New Zealand what the humidity is like because uh, we do suffer from quite high humidity at times and recently had a, an episode where the um, humidity was basically up at 100%. Uh, quite, it's quite common in summer to be in the 90s and that will obviously affect um, how the uh, star is being seen by the camera. Now sometimes when the uh, humidity is extremely high the star when you look on PHD2 looks like this. And of course, as a result, uh, the tracking goes off a bit. And so I would find my total RMS error sometimes gets up about 0 0.7, 0 0.8, uh, even slightly higher. But when uh, the humidity drops a bit and the scene conditions get better, then the um, star can obviously look more like this. And of course, then uh, it's performing extremely well. And uh, as you can see from the examples I've got running through above, you know, it sort of tracks somewhere around about 0.45 to 0.5 often, but I have had it down at uh, in the 0.3s, um, which has been, you know, fantastic. But um, it probably more commonly in the sort of 0.45 region. I have spoken to Glenn, aka Astro Bloke, and Joe from uh, Joe Navarro from Joe's Astrophoto.com about uh, you know some aspects of guiding etc and actually had a, a video call with Joe where he showed me some of the um, features in PHD2 that you can actually just tweak a little bit to try and just improve things a little bit better so I, I'm kind of learning a bit more about that at the moment um, but I won't go into those aspects in this video um, I'm probably not the best person to be doing that anyway I, I think I would leave that to uh, both Glenn and Joe but otherwise, yeah, I'm very happy with the performance of the mount uh, so far. I'm hardly ever throwing away subs, um, and it's usually not due to uh, tracking errors. It's actually due to clouds um, coming through and um, spoiling an image. So, yeah, overall, very happy with the way this mount performs. So that's a sort of a run through or overview of the mount. Um, and showing you all the features. Um, I really love the uh, cable system, the internal cable system, or cable management system they call it, um, which, you know, as I described, just there's nothing between the moving parts of the telescope and the ground, so nothing to get snagged. Um, it guides really well. It's got tons of uh, capacity for, for something hefty to be put on it, um, and balances beautifully. Um, I really like it. I have to say probably my only gripe are those um, finger ripping knobs on the side for uh, tightening up on the saddle so your telescope doesn't fall off. But uh, yeah, would I recommend it? Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, definitely, and also for an, uh, an observatory set up where you're actually not having to move it around. Um, and I do like the fact that they have um, updated the, the cable management system to include more USB 3 ports and that they've actually provided you with the ability just to swap out this box uh, if you bought one of the older ones which was primarily USB 2 with one USB 3 mount with my particular setup because I'm using a Pegasus Powerbox Advance I'm actually only using one USB 3 output anyway so <laughs> but you know there's capacity for later on um, so yeah that's my thoughts on the Ioptron CM120